Hey there, 5 One Youth. Welcome back to the fourth video in our spiritual warfare series, where we've been learning about what spiritual warfare is and how we are called to participate in it as part of our Christian lives. In our last video, we learned how to address accusations. Accusations being some of the most common tools that the enemy uses to lead us astray. And we learned that the way you address an accusation is you first identify it for what it is. And we are able to do that by listening to the tone and thinking about what the message the accusation is sending. And so when we have thoughts that are said in our minds in a hurtful tone and that they have a negative message about who we are, we can know that that thought is from spiritual wickedness. It's an accusation from the enemy. And then once we've identified the accusation for what it is, we rebuke it and speak the truth in its place. And so when you have a negative thought about yourself, like you're dumb, you're stupid, no one would love you, those kinds of things, you identify and you say, no, that's not true, it's a lie. I know that I am loved by God. I know that God has blessed me with many gifts. You speak truths about who God says you are in place of the accusation, and that's how we address those things. In today's video, we're going to be learning about another tactic that the enemy uses, and it's called an agreement. And what is an agreement? Well, it's a contract that we make with spiritual evil. An agreement is a way that we agree with what evil is telling us about our lives and things that we experience. Now, maybe you're asking, but wait a minute, why would anyone, especially a Christian, ever make an agreement with evil? Shouldn't we know better than to do that? And yes, we should, but remember, one of the defining characteristics of spiritual evil is that it is deceptive. It relies on trickery. It doesn't announce itself. It likes to slip in, in the dark, in the way that we can't see it, and make us agree with it in a way that we don't even know what we're doing. It takes advantage of us. And agreements are typically made in moments of intense emotional pain. And in that pain, the enemy will whisper the agreement into our minds and try to entice us into believing it. I'll give you an example to help illustrate what I mean. Imagine you have a really close friend and that friend does something to really hurt you. They betray you in some way. Maybe it's they share a secret that you told them and you made them promise never to tell anyone. Or perhaps you catch your friend, you know, saying mean things about you behind your back. Whatever it is, the friend has done something that really, really upsets you. And in that pain, as you are dealing with those hurt emotions, this thought kind of presents itself into your head, which is, you can't trust anyone. And in that pain, you, you hear that thought and you say, yeah, you know, that's true. You really can't trust anyone. And boom, you have just made an agreement with evil. And it's an agreement with evil because it's a lie. It is a lie that you cannot trust anyone. There are plenty of trustworthy people in the world. Just because this one person betrayed you does not mean that you should never trust anyone else ever again. But in your pain, it's hurt so much, it makes you think, man, I can't trust anyone now because this one person did this to me. And now because you've made that agreement, it's going to start to shape the way that you form friendships in the future. Do you get a better idea of what an agreement is and how it works? I'll give you another example to help clarify some more. You know, you have a sibling and you bicker with your sibling, you go back and forth, but they do something that's just like way over the top that just really, really upsets you. Maybe, you know, you need help with something really bad and they won't give it to you. Or perhaps they go to your parents and they make up a story about you to get you in trouble. And whatever it is that they did, you go into that place of extreme emotional pain and again, this kind of thought presents itself to you saying, we'll never get along. I'll, you'll never get along with your sibling. And again, in that pain, you think, yeah, you know, it's true. I won't ever get along with them. We'll never get along. And the way that this works is the agreement is appealing to us because in that pain, we are looking for something that will help us make sense of what's going on. And the agreement with evil 
pretends or it presents this opportunity to help us think that we learned something from this experience, that at least we learned our lesson that, oh, you really can't trust anyone or I'll never be able to get along with our siblings. It tricks us into thinking that, well, at least we've gained some knowledge about what has happened in this life. And if true, that we have gained something, but we've gained a false belief. Because again, it is not true that you can't trust anyone and it's not true that you could never get along with your sibling. So agreements are really dangerous because they make us think that we're learning something about life, but the thing that we're learning in the agreement is a lie. It's a false thing. And so why does this matter? Well, it really, as I was saying earlier, it, it shapes the way that you interact with people in the future. It primes you to be defensive or to react in a negative way in future encounters that have to do with that agreement that you make. So to help flesh this out, here's an illustration from the examples we've just used. So you had that friend who betrayed you and you make the agreement that you can't trust anyone. And now for until that agreement is broken, whenever you kind of make new friends, you always keep them at arm's length. You don't ever really let anyone into your life because in the back of your mind, you've made this agreement that, oh, I can't let anyone in because you can't trust anyone. And now because of that agreement, you are missing out on having deep, intimate friendships with other people because you refuse to bring down your walls because you are scared of being hurt again in the same way that that friend hurt you the first time. And you've made the agreement that you can't open up, you can't let anyone in because you can't trust anyone. And so now you've been robbed of those relationships that you could have formed in the future. To use the other example with your sibling, you know, as you get older, you've made this agreement that, oh, we'll never get along. And soon you and your sibling start to drift apart. You talk less and less. And instead of trying to reach out to your sibling and maybe save that relationship, you start thinking, well, this is for the best anyway. You know, we could never get along, so it's okay that we don't talk anymore. And so now because of that agreement that you've made, you lose your relationship with your sibling and you think it's a good thing rather than something to be sorry over. So do you see how agreements, they prime us to react in a certain way. They shape the way that we respond to our future circumstances. As human beings, we are always on the lookout for what happens next. We're always trying to anticipate how things are going to play out so that we can respond correctly. And what agreements do is they train us to respond in a way that robs us of close relationships that shut us off from other people that prevent us from having the full abundant life that God wants us to have. When you're living under an agreement with evil, you start being defensive, you start being closed off, you start being sec uh, skeptical towards life as opposed to being open and accepting and joyful. And so if you let an agreement to you know, shape the way that you see the world, you're going to be living a less full life. You're going to be missing out on things because those agreements will keep you closed off from other people and from yourself. And so I hope you see how agreements work, that they shape the way that we see the world and how we respond, and how in those moments of emotional pain, we get those thoughts that it's like, you can't trust anyone, you'll never get along, you know, you knew this would happen, whatever the agreement might be. And it's always usually about something that is really hurtful to you because it's in those moments of pain that we are most vulnerable and the enemy takes advantage of that. And so when you make an agreement again, it shuts you off from living the full life that God wants you to live. And so I hope you see why knowing that agreements exist um, is so important because the first step in breaking these agreements is to acknowledge that they're there and in the next video, I'll go more in depth about how we can really break these agreements so that they don't have control over us. They don't shut us off from the new great experiences that God wants to give us. I'll see you guys in the next video.